Right, welcome back. In the last session, we created the key wall, right? And then we also understood how you could just uh, write your key vault script right from scratch. And then we set a bunch of permission as well. What we're gonna, gonna do is in this session is we're gonna use this key vault and create a brand new Postgres which can connect to this particular key vault and start putting in username and password into this key vault. And there is gonna be an integration between key vault and postgres all right so what i'm going to do is i am going to create a brand new folder underneath the lecture 9 all of these lectures are already available into the github repository so i'm just going to just put in everything over there so i'm going to name it as postgres this is going to be a long session okay in case you're feeling a little monotonous you can start watching it at 1.5x speed as well so underneath the postgres i'm going to create a variable name file name main.tf right and just gonna close all of these unnecessary tabs and then I'm gonna use a van.tf perfect all right let's start writing the code now first thing first what we want is we want to give a provider which is gonna be Azure RM that's the beauty of IntelliJ gives us an auto completion feature we're going to use a data because we already have a resource group created, right? So it's going to be Azure RM resource group. Okay. We're going to call it as a RG. And the name is going to be what we already have over here. The resource group name is this one. All right. We're going to put it over here. Once you have uh, feed in the resource group, what we're going to do is for password, we're going to use a random resource. We did it earlier for virtual machine password also. So we're going to use it again. Postgres pass because we don't want to manually feed in the password, right? So we're going to use it. Uh, the length is going to be a 10, 10 character password and the minimum special I want to keep it as as two. So minimal special character would uh, be required as two characters. So that because few of the few of the um, password needs special character as well, right? And now I'm going to import the key vault. So that's going to be data Azure RM Azure RM key vault key vault Postgres. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to use the name I've already created over here. So just need to import this and the resource group also would be like this picked up right from here. I hope everything is making sense because we're kind of doing a recap only. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a secret. How do we create a secret resource Azure? So underneath this one, we want to create a secret. If you go over here at the moment, we haven't got any secret over here. Okay. We're going to create a brand new secret. So it's going to be Azure RM, I don't know, underscore Postgres, underscore server. Oh no. Apologies, we, it's going to be key vault secret. All right. Yeah. Once this is done, we're going to reference this as Postgres secret. Perfect. Key vault ID. How are we going to, how are we going to get is? We already have a key vault defined over here, so it's going to be data dot this guy right over here, Azure RM key vault dot. It's going to be key reference, which is this one, key vault Postgres and dot ID. Perfect. Uh, we're going to give a name to our password, which is going to be Postgres password and the value value is going to be this guy right over here so it's going to be random perfect dot postgres and then dot result perfect and now we are good to integrate keep a secret create a secret into the key vault which we have right over here all right now we're going to get into the fun part of creating the postgres server okay so it's going to be resource Azure RM underscore Postgres SQL SQL 
okay just missing a bit of type over here sql underscore server yeah that's about it and then post grass db location i'm gonna use the same location as resource group so what it's gonna be data dot azure and resource group dot rg dot location all right the name the name is going to be postgres uh, a random number seven eight zero because it has to be globally unique all right the resource group name again data dot azure and resource group dot rg dot name perfect sq name we're going to use an sq name these list is available so i've already got the list i'm using a gp gen 5 so this is basically uh, the amount of codes and machines we are, which we are using right and then um, we need a version of postgres as well all right so probably we're gonna keep the version into a variable postgres version we haven't got it but we're gonna create it right over here just gonna pick it right from here and post it right over here let's try to create a version first okay so postgres version we can create as default value as 11 that's about it all right so once the version is created you would see that error has also gone away so now we need to define a bunch of um, information so we're done with the location we're done with the name we're done with the resource group sq name uh, version as well we need the administration login so the login name would be uh, we probably could define into the variable as well we're going to keep the name as probably as simple as uh, postgres okay by the way this should be in variables i'm not typing it uh, to save a bunch of not typing it to save a bunch of minutes couple of minutes over here so we're going to come back over here and i need the password as well so admin login password this is the password for your postgres so what it is going to be a quick quiz for you a quick test for you just just quickly imagine in your mind what it is going to be you've already defined it the secret right over here all right so it's going to be azure okay azure rm azure rm key wall secret dot postgres secret and then dot value value of whatever has been generated over here so once this is done uh, we need the ssl enforcement also whether we want to define ssl enforcement enable also or not what we're going to do is we're going to put it into a variable okay um, storage profile and postgres file and underscore postgres let's start defining the variable okay define the variable right over here and uh, we need bunch of um, information over here so what we need is first thing first we want to understand whether we want to um, define the enablement or not all right so we want to define the ssl enabled or not probably for now what we want to do is we're using a managed service right so what we're going to do is we're going to define it under a map all right so it's going to be true all right and that's about it and let's go back to our main file again and see what else do we need so there's going to be too much back and forth what we could do also do is um, we can keep our variable file probably open open as well and split right and then use it like this perfect i'm just gonna enlarge this a little and gonna delarge this a little all right now we're looking good we have defined the sq name we've defined the domain now let's define bunch of other option so that's gonna be storage mb all right and this is going to be var dot storage profile we what we're gonna do is we want to define everything over here now that's where the fun begins all right I'm just gonna use this one over here variable of our postgres over here okay we want to define what we want to define is uh, we over here in the same variable we want to define how much 
MB storage MB which you want to use so we're going to define the first variable probably we're going to use a 5120 space and that the, the same we're going to define over here all right so how do we define right over here we're going to use an element element a function into terraform and oh in the element we're going to define which particular object in the array we want to select so we're going to the, we're going to select the first array which is 0th now this is our 0th value which is this one 0th value which is 5120 and this is what we are selecting right over here we need to do it same for over here also element and we want to select probably the first option okay so this is going to select this guy over here and the storage mb is going to select the 0th element which is this one all right now let's move on to the next one which is going to be again i'm going to split it right so we can understand a little better split this a little more and now we're going to define backup retention in days and we're going to define again in the same storage postgres and then we want to define the auto grow enabled again we're going to define the var dot storage postgres and then we are going to define geo redundant backup which is needed to backup your postgres in case of any um, disaster management all right so backup retention we need to define uh, how much uh, probably how many days we want to keep the backup being taken automatically by azure so what i'm going to do is i am probably define going to define seven days okay i'm going to define it seven days we're going to change this to one one because this is one value and this is going to be second i hope this is making complete sense if not just pause the video and watch it because we're using element over here um, auto enabled grow what we want is um, we want it to automatically grow it whenever is needed so we're going to define it as uh, probably true okay so we're going to define it as true so we don't need to define a newer one so we're going to define it as two over here comma two and that's about it and then we're going to define the geo redundant backup to be enabled or not we want to define it as true again this is going to be slash rather comma two and we are going to define the element right over here all right we're done with defining the uh, configuration for for postgres server uh, and that's about it i'm going to take pause over here because we've been doing a lot of configuration right over here i'm going to let you write all of them i'm going to let you use element also and the next session i'm going to create the actual database uh, this was the server we're going to create the database um, and then we're going to create the firewall rule as well i hope this was informative i'll see you in a while thank you